This is a hate song. It's about drinking beer. <laughs> drinking beer. <laughs> hey. Hairspray, 
uh, like, you know, bands like Rat, Poison, and Molly Crew created a sort of global warming which caused a hole in the ozone layer. <laughs> Falling out of war. Uh, <laughs> so war is from Antarctica. But really, war is from Richmond, Virginia. Musicians and artists that work together to create meaning. Uh, we call that collective the slave pit. And uh, what we create is war. But uh, in fact, a lot of musicians in Richmond, uh, dozens of bands, and a lot of artists have gone into the creation of war. It's truly a product of the underground community in Richmond, Virginia. And those people can claim it, right? Uh, and war would not have existed were it not for Virginia Commonwealth University. Woo! And in particular, the art school there. Uh, uh, and in particular, the ways that guys really hated art school there. <laughs> so, the two most important figures in, in uh, war getting started were Hunter Jackson, the artist, Dave Brocky, a musician, also an artist. And both of them, those guys moved to Richmond to go to school. Uh, and, but they didn't actually meet there. They met at another place, a sort of hub of the uh, underground arts community in Richmond at the time, which is the Richmond Dairy. And uh, the Richmond Dairy is a building that's very distinctive. It's over here in Jackson Ward. It's got you know, three milk bottles uh, on the corners. Um, but in the mid-'80s, it was a dilapidated, rundown space that was constantly being renovated, but nothing was ever really happening. And uh, it was full of a bunch of hippies, and artists, and ne'er-do-wells, punk rockers, and that's where we could afford to put our rehearsal spaces, and where we could afford to, to create art, right, to have art studios. And Jackson Ward in the 1980s was marked by severe economic depression, right, concentrated poverty and crime, and the dairy was kind of an island in the middle of all that. So the dairy, was the site of the first slave pit, because that's also what we call the studio. Hunter Jackson uh, had moved there, and he was making a low-budget movie about aliens that try to conquer the planet Earth, but they get distracted by sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and so they start robbing. <laughs> <laughs> well, next to Hunter's studio at the dairy, there was a rock band, a guy named Dave Brockett, playing in his uh, goofy band, Death Piggy, one of the greatest bands from the city. And the idea was, well, they'll be the rock band, right? And so war was born. And it would not have happened had it not been for the Richmond Dairy. But also, interestingly, it would not have happened if Richmond didn't have urban decay, right? If it weren't a blighted city. Uh, harmful policies there in the mid-'80s of, of sort of subsidized housing, uh, withdrawal, lack of investment, and white flight from the inner city to the counties. Uh, concentrated poverty in the inner city of Richmond, Virginia. And that fact bears on the creation of war. And so I want to talk about something right now that might make people a little bit uncomfortable because I'm talking about race, right? Uh, unex I think that there are some unexamined dynamics of race, class, and power in that fact. Here's where I become an academic. <laughs> war registers this city's troubled history of race relations and economic struggle. So too, War registers racialized debates and contested narratives of history in Richmond, Virginia. We named our production company Slave Pit. The people who work for war are slaves of war. And when you tell people that, in the mid-80s, it's interesting, most people didn't bat an eye. Now, right? <laughs> well, and, and, you know, slavery is in a way a central concept. Uh, you know, we talk about working for the band as being slaves of war. War has slaves, war are slaves. Um, but, and of course, slavery in the context of war, we're talking about this sort of DIY ethic of punk rock, right? A voluntary devotion to art. And, and it represents 
freedom in this weird way, right? The freedom to create. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean all the other stuff that it means. We can't divorce that word from the concept of slavery, especially not in Richmond, Virginia. It has a specific meaning. We can't take that in any way. Um, can't divorce slavery with its historical meaning. So an example of how Guar reflects and reminds Richmond of its history is this idea of, of slavery and war slaves. Um, but, it, but, but the idea also kind of betrays privilege. It betrays uh, Guar's identity, right? Uh, in that, in our narrative, slavery is an option, right? Uh, just like it was an option for us to live and work in Jackson War. And it might not have been that way for the other people. That dynamic speaks to the identity of the city. Uh, Richmond has always challenged Richmond. Uh, or a lot of, we've challenged the social world, world here. Early on in war, we killed these sort of archetypes. We'd bring out a, a redneck on stage to have a shot at it. We'd kill it. And we would kill the art teachers that we had at VCU. And, <laughs> and we would kill religious figures, right? We would, we would uh, you know, we'd bring out anybody who sort of like wanted to sort of brandish a moral stick at war, we would kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but war is not real. Wars never killed anyone. Before he died, Dan Brocky said something very interesting on the news. Uh, he said, you know, they're like, what about the controversy surrounding the war? War, he said, is doing nothing but continuing the Richmond tradition of death and destruction. <laughs> <laughs> the civil war, you know, and what he was talking about there was the civil war and tobacco, right? Like, uh, the Civil War made Richmond, Virginia, a city of mass graves, right? It made a horrific struggle happen here. Now, you can't erase that image. A lot of death happened in this city, terrible violence. And the narrative of that history is contested. And that's one of the ways that Richmond is known on the world stage, is that that narrative is contested. Putting the statue of Arthur Ashe on putting the statue of Lincoln in Treasure, building a stadium over the site of the historic slave uh, market. Uh, so these debates are what Richmond is known for on the world stage. And it's known for tobacco, an industry that for years killed people. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but maybe the people killed people, there's that argument. But smoking caused cancer. And they knew it, and they denied it. The only people denying that smoking caused cancer in the world were attorneys from Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> so, Richmond economy, Richmond history, linked to the Civil War, to death, to issues of race, uh, economic struggle, but also war. <laughs> In that context, war looks like the safest thing to ever come from this city. <laughs> so why is all of this important? Because like it or not, Richmond, war is one of your most recognized cultural products. I'm very proud of it. War carries Richmond, Virginia to the world. And while we do these things on stage, we kill people on stage, we act crazy, war is about creative energy. It's about people coming together to create something. And I just wanted to do that today, and uh, talk about that today, and also acknowledge the history surrounding uh, that Richmond, Virginia. So, thank you. Hey, heavy metal!